Hey, y'all. Today we have a treat. Uh, it's Tommy Kelly from WIP. Of course, he uh, made, broke away um, to talk to us, but you'll hear him other times probably between now and the, the game. We're about 24 hours out. Tommy, what, what, what are the feels just off the top? How are you feeling? I feel really good about this game, Matt. I mean, I, I think the Eagles are in a great spot, obviously. Couldn't couldn't ask for more. I mean, you got home field advantage, uh, you know, going in the NFC Championship game. A rookie seventh-round quarterback coming in here, you should be able to have success against. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I think Eagles fans should be really confident going into this game more. No, no question. I mean, is is there any is is it possible that the link could get any more juice than it was on that? I was there on the thirty eight seven Vikings evening. I mean, Debo Samuel with his comments. Is it possible to even take the stadium to another level? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it would be hard to recapture that kind of intensity. But uh, I mean, judging by the fact that it's Philadelphia fans in the NFC Championship game. They probably will. I was at that game, too, and it was absolutely insane. So, yeah, I mean, it's going to be crazy down there tomorrow. And, you know, at the beginning of the season, this is all you could have asked for. To be in this spot, to have home field advantage uh, in this kind of situation, you couldn't you you couldn't ask for a better situation. And I think, you know, the team's going to come out prepared. I think the team's going to be ready. And I think the, the crowd is going to be ready to celebrate tomorrow. Hell yeah. So in order to get there, uh, they got to get the X's and O's right. Last week, I saw an interesting wrinkle that I was very pleased with. I've been thinking that we were kind of underutilizing or misutilizing Zach Pascal Last week, completely flipped that. Uh, to my eye, it was, it was beautiful. He outsnapped Quez Watkins 24 to 22. Thought that was about right. But what do you think that they're going to do this week? You think this matchup call calls for more Quez Watkins? Uh, I don't know. I mean, t- specifically, like, I'm usually somebody who favors throwing the ball. I think typically in the NFL, that's what you really do. But this week, I-, I I think running the ball early is probably the right move for the Eagles because you look at that San Francisco defense, you know, uh, their strength is-, is getting after the passer, getting after the quarterback. The best way to slow down a pass rush is to run the ball effectively, especially early on in the game. And I think that's something that the Eagles should do. You know, try to run the ball, try to slow down that pass rush. And as the game goes on, I think things will open up in the pass game. Like A.J. Brown, I know he was kind of upset last week with the lack of uh, the lack of targets, the lack of action. I think this is going to be better for him this week, a better spot for him to be successful. I think, uh, you know, I would expect a big pass play to A.J. Brown at some point during the course of this game. Um, But early on, I think the most important thing, whether it's running the ball, whether it's short, quick passes, getting the ball out of Jalen Hurts' hands early, I think the key for the Eagles is going to be slowing down that 49ers pass rush because that's how this defense has success. When they can get after the passer, they can really pin their ears back and rush. That's when they become dangerous. So, I, you know, I think as far as the game plan, you slow down that pass rush, it'll open up things in the passing game. Uh, specifically, I think A.J. Brown could have a big day tomorrow. To the 49ers side, I totally agree with you, by the way. Uh, to the 49ers side, um, we've got last week, we, we had Quez Wat, uh, not Quez Watkins, Kaiser White uh, stepping up big. Uh, do you think that this week will call for more of T.J. Edwards or Kaiser to beat, to to cover the backs and tight ends? Because you know that the 49ers are going to be trying to attack us in that way. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think that's right on. And I think, uh, you know, what's huge for the Eagles this week is getting Avante Maddox back. Like, that, that is he's – a, he's a critical, critical player in this matchup because what, what the 49ers are going to try to do, as I see it, is, you know, they're going to try to get matchups in the middle of the field uh, one-on-one, specifically with McCaffrey, Kittle, and Debo Samuel. Now, you get Avante Maddox back, that's a huge deal. And I think what the Eagles are going to do – um, is is play a lot of five down linemen, a lot of either Jordan Davis or Linval Joseph at the nose, you know, play uh, the two defensive tackles and then two ends on the outside and then five defensive backs. And I think TJ Edwards is going to be the lone linebacker. Like this is a week where I think Kaiser White might not play a ton of snaps because if he's on the field, you know, Kyle Shanahan's going to look to exploit him in coverage. I mean, Kaiser White has had a good year, but he is a guy who you can – 
pick on a little bit. Unfortunately, absolutely yeah, true. If you get those kind of correct matchups. So I think the challenge for the Eagles, and I think what this game is really going to come down for, to for them defensively, can they stop the 49ers running game with six men in the box? Because you want to be able to play the five defensive backs. You want Avante Maddox out on the field most of the time. C.J. Gardner-Johnson as well, obviously. He'll be out there a lot. But, um, you know, if the Eagles can play the five down linemen, five defensive backs with one linebacker, that's, I think, the schematically what Jonathan Gannon's going to look to do. And you can only really do that if you're stopping the run out of that formation. So I think, uh, you know, Eagles stopping the run with only one linebacker in the game is going to be a real key. Wow. So a lot of a lot of dime is what you're thinking? A lot of yeah, a, a lot of the, a lot of the nickel uh, coverage with 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 that extra lineman in there because I think you know when you put that extra lineman in there at the nose, um, you know that that's kind of a, a, another way to stop the run. But it's a little bit of a gamble because if you don't stop him at the line of scrimmage and that guy does get to the second level, Ooh, then like McCaffrey, right? That's where you get a little concerned because you only have one linebacker in the game. And, you know, either Avante Maddox, C.J. Gardner-Johnson could function kind of like your second linebacker. Um, but, you know, that's not really what they're suited to do. Like, that's better in the pass game than it is in the run game. Like, you you don't really want Avante Maddox or C.J. Gardner-Johnson or Marcus Epps playing a linebacker-type position uh, when the 49ers are running the ball. But I think you're going to need to trade something off here because you don't want Kaiser White matched up against one of those guys in man coverage. So I think it's going to be interesting. Some of the decisions got Jonathan Gannon's going to have to make. And, hey, he's going to need to adjust. If things aren't working during the game, he's going to need to make those adjustments in-game to really uh, you know, uh, put his defense in the best possible situation to succeed. No question. And, and uh, that may part of part of this equation may include uh, Reed Blankenship. When I was looking at the snap counts, he actually out snapped every Eagles defensive back last week with 48 snaps. And so maybe maybe Blankenship, what are you thinking that they do with Blanket? Because now we got Avante Maddox back. You got CJ Gardner Johnson moving back to the I mean, this is all this is a good problem to have if you're Jonathan Gannon. I mean, every single Eagle at your disposal. <laughs> yeah. And I think Blankenship, obviously like he's the guy who's probably going to lose the most snaps with Avante coming back, but I'm interested. I think it's a good point to see if there is still a role for him because he's played well. Maybe you play him a little bit at linebacker, you know, maybe that's mm -hmm. a, a wrinkle that the Eagles throw in there, but it, you know, just off what you mentioned with the health, uh, Matt, it, it's, it, it, it's really incredible. And and like how many years <laughs> from 2017, 18, 19 was the story at the end of the year? Why does this team sustain so many injuries? Like, why are they so Doug. Uh, Thanks, unhealthy? Doug. <laughs> well, I don't think it's necessarily Doug. I think well, like, let's face it. Part of it is, is, is luck. Like there's no doubt. Part it, of is it is luck. flat out luck. You can't all control. respect Doug. No, Love no, you yeah. still. <laughs> but I think, uh, I do think there's a point to be made though. Like organizationally, they looked at what they were doing those years and they changed things. And that's why, like, one thing I never want to hear again, like next year, I, I, I said this when I was on WIP last night. No preseason. If, okay. yeah, if, 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 <laughs> if we're having this debate come August next year, my, my head's just going to go explode because it's like, I'm not even engaging it anymore. It should I'm be settled. Discuss, yes. Like, should it not be settled forever? <laughs> that, like, guys don't need to play in the preseason. They came out, they were great to start the season. There was no rust factor. Your guys stayed healthy. So it's not going to work this way every year. But I think that debate at least can be put to rest, at least for, you know. The no, I'm, I'm not engaging in it anymore. <laughs> People ask me that question. I'm, next question. Yeah. Yeah. I think as, as for now, I think, you know, that that debate is pretty much settled at this point. Elijah Mitchell appears to be – he's questionable. He led the team, uh, the 49ers uh, in rushing last week. Do you think that we see Elijah Mitchell and uh, Christian McCaffrey as a two-headed monster out of the backfield? Uh, yeah, I, I think that – well, uh, Elijah Mitchell, we'll see if he plays because um, I don't believe he practiced all week. He might have been limited mm -hmm. on Friday. Absolutely. Sure. No, he didn't yeah. practice all week. Okay, he didn't practice all week. So – yeah, I mean, we'll see how, how that plays out, but I don't uh, like, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see how Shanahan approaches it. And I think Kyle Shanahan is one of the best, you know, uh, play callers and play designers in football. But I think where they're really going to look at is attacking with the short and inter intermediate passes and specifically whether it's McCaffrey 
Kittle or Debo Samuel, you know, try to get them ball, the ball in space, try to let them run after the catch. So it's going to be really interesting to see how the Eagles uh, handle that, but I'm less worried about the run game, more worried about the, the short and intermediate passing game. And, and, and uh, I'm interested to see how Kyle Shanahan approaches it, but he's going to look to try to get his playmakers the ball. And one thing you know about all those guys, especially Debo Samuel and George Kittle, you're not bringing those guys down with one guy. Like th that's no. a big key for the Eagles. You need to rally to the ball, get a bunch of guys in there gang tackling, because I mean, those guys are, are very difficult to bring down. I mean, Debo Samuel, Debo Samuel might be my favorite player, just objectively, you know, Eagle, non-Eagle to watch him football just because of how he, he's, he's just electric. like a ball. He's a bowling ball. I mean, it's like he's impossible to bring down. So I think that's going to be really important for the Eagles tomorrow is making sure you, you uh, have a bunch of guys rallying to the ball whenever those guys have it. I kind of got at this earlier right off the top. Uh, do you think that – Debo's comments in any way will impact what we actually see on the field or maybe include the crowd. I mean, do you think that it's that Debo's comments, whether or not he said, because for the, for the people who are listening, he said, basically, yeah, we hear Philly has a great, as a great atmosphere. And we know that we've been there last year, but our fans are the best fans. It's basically what he said. Um, do you think that those comments at all have an impact on what we actually see? No, I think the crowd was going to be nuts anyway. I, I think, you know, and I don't expect them to say anything different necessarily, but I do think, you know, I think San Francisco is fully aware of what they're walking into here. And and I kind of like that. I kind of like that it's kind of in their heads a little bit. Like you hear Kyle Shanahan is showing his team video of what the Bucks did in the NFC Championship game here 20 years ago. To me, that that tells you that, that's that, ridiculous. Right. That tells you that this is in their head a little bit, that, that, that this is something they're thinking about. And if I'm like a 49er fan, you know, I wouldn't want this to be something that's really on their minds. But yeah, that's think, time they're not spending scouting Kenny Gainwell, who just dropped a hundred piece on the Giants. Like, right, like you, you guys are watching your... Rodney Barber running back a pick. I'm sorry. That's I stupid. feel like you could use your time more productively <laughs> than being worried about what the Bucks did to the Eagles 20 years ago. So I think they're fully aware of what they're walking into. Um, and we'll see if they can handle it. Uh, I think most of their players will. The guy I think is really going to struggle, and this is, you know, what I think the game's going to come down to, is I don't think Brock Purdy's going to handle this well. And maybe I'll be wrong, and and if so, you know, uh, he's proven a lot of people wrong so far this year. Maybe he will again, but, um, you know, I have a hard time believing a seventh-round rookie is going to step in here and just, you know, have that type of, of success in this kind of environment. And 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 for the, you know, obviously we'll all have to eat crow, right? I'll have to eat my hat. Right. Um, on on Monday potentially, but seriously, I mean, if Brock Purdy goes off, what is Brock Purdy going off look like? You know what I mean? It's not like going to drop six hundred yards on anybody. You know, six touchdowns. Brock Purdy going off ends up with the 49ers with thirty four points. I mean, that's Brock Purdy just going off. I, think I would classify that as as him going off. Like I think. The Niners, if they're going to win this game, like they need to keep the score down. Like I have a yes, hard they time. Do. I have a hard time believing. Like I don't think there's any way the 49ers score any more than 24 points in this game. I agree I'd be, with you. I'd be surprised if they did that. So their formula is going to be to keep the score down um, and keep the Eagles' offense off the field and, and and try to you know control the football. And you know I think they're going to struggle with that. I, I think the Eagles are going to be able to force him into some mistakes. Honestly, I didn't think Brock Purdy played well at all last week against Dallas. I mean, <laughs> Dallas should have won that game. If if Dak yeah, Prescott no doesn't doesn't turn the ball over at will and the Cowboys don't completely choke that game away, uh, you know, the Cowboys win that football game. Um, I think the real turning point was at the end of the first half where the Cowboys are going down in a tie game to maybe attempt the field goal. Who knows who they would have made it with the state of that kicker, but um you know, Dak throws a pick and it ends up being three points the other way. So I, I think that was where the game really changed. And that's the difference. I don't think Jalen Hurts is going to make those same kind of mistakes that Dak Prescott made last week. No, no question. No question. And so so while we're already here, let's not even belabor the point. Give, give us a score prediction for the Birds game. Tommy. Uh, I, I like the Eagles. And, you know, I, I think I've drawn a little bit of um, – I criticism from people this week for how, 
confident I am, but I think the Eagles win 34, 13. I think this is mm. a blowout. I don't think this game is close because Matt, I just, as I said, I don't think Brock Purdy is going to handle this situation. Well, I think, you know, the Eagles are going to jump up early and I just think things are going to get progressively worse for the 49ers. Like I think, um, you know, once things start going downhill, it's going to be tough for them to stop that avalanche. The crowd's just going to get more intense. The Eagles are going to feed off that. And, you know, I think it could be similar to that Vikings game in a, in, in a way. Like, I think it'll be tighter than that, 38-7. to 7. This I have 34-13. And I think the Eagles do add on late. Like, wouldn't surprise me if it's like a 7-10 to 10 point game at half and the Eagles, you know, really extend things in the second half. But I'm incredibly confident. Like, I think... You know, they're the best team in the NFC. They've been the they best are. team in the NFC all year. They're 15 and one this year with Jalen Hurts at quarterback. And the only loss was that Monday night game to the Commanders. And let's face it, that was a weird game. Eagles had some turnovers. There were some, you know, I hate bad playing in the calls. refs, but bad calls. Um, and the time of possession was just way out of whack. And that's the only game they lost with Jalen Hurts at quarterback. I understand they haven't played a team this good. That's fair. Um, but I don't think the 49ers have played a, ge- a team this good either this year. So no. I think the Eagles win, and I think the Eagles win big. Let's go over to the AFC. That 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 line on the Kansas City game has been moving all over the place based on the health of, of, of Patrick Mahomes, obviously. Um, what, what are you thinking about that one? Well, in that game, um, you know, and it's, it's interesting because obviously – the storyline of the Eagles playing Andy Reid in the Super Bowl. Oh my God, it'd be electric. It would be incredible, but I don't (laughs) think it's going to happen. I think the Bengals are going to go in there and and win again. And it's not even necessarily that much about Mahomes injury. Like that factors in a little bit. Like if Mahomes at a hundred percent, you know, maybe I feel differently about this, but I just think that Bengals team, they have something to them. Like that was a really impressive performance to go into Buffalo and win the way they did. I thought they'd win that game. I didn't think they'd dominate that game. I mean, no. the Bills, the Bills are really good. And, and Josh, it was Allen, more impressive than that 10 points. I think it was 17 or 27 to 17. Is that right? 27, 10, um, 27, 10, 20. Oh, that was, but it, impressive. Was, <laughs> but it was like, it was one of those situations where, you know, the Bengals just come out and they go right down the field and score a touchdown to start the game. Um, and, you know, I, 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 Andy obviously has the history and championship games of, of his issues. Uh, it's less about that though. And more about, I just think the Bengals are, 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 are that good. I think they're really good. And I think, uh, you know, Joe Burrow is going to go in there and play well. I'll go Bengals 34, 24. I think it's going to be high scoring. But in the end, I think the Chiefs are really going to have a lot of problems stopping that Bengals offense. Are the the Bengals are uh, who's the better matchup? Should the Eagles, you know, uh, rooting guide from Tommy Kelly? Who should we be rooting for to play? Should the Eagles win? Well, the first game? matchup matchup wise, you know, I don't think it makes that big a difference. And it, okay. part of it's like, part of it's like, okay, you know. Which one do you want to choose? You either want to play Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl or you want to play Joe Burrow. <laughs> it's not really a great choice either way. But I'd rather play the Bengals for this reason. Okay. And okay. the reason I'd rather play the Bengals uh, has nothing to do with matchup, none of that stuff. It's that I don't want to play Andy in a Super Bowl because Andy obviously has a very complicated legacy in Philadelphia. But one thing that I, I hate about a segment – of the fan base in this city is the disrespect yeah, we share this. That he gets. And I, I Zandy, I think is responsible for the Eagles in large part being what they become. Like they weren't a franchise nationally that mattered before 2000. I know people that love buddy Ryan don't want to admit that, but it's true. I mean, this, this was not an organization that won anything. They very rarely went deep in the playoffs and gone to a championship game, you know, in 20 years before Andy got here. He made them nationally relevant. And I wouldn't want, you know, that segment of the fan base to be able to, you know, have a victory over Andy in the Super Bowl to to their name. Yep, to you know, hang over want... him because it's exactly. so ugly. Exactly. Yeah. Because it would get ugly. <laughs> and I mean, objectively, for content for the radio station would be incredible. Oh, my so God. <laughs> in that way, it would make our jobs very easy for the next couple of it weeks. It would. But, 
yeah, I, I don't want that group of fans to be able to celebrate a victory over Andy in the Super Bowl. So for that reason, I think the matchup's pretty even. So for that reason, I, I kind of am pulling for the Bengals to win that game. Two week nostalgia fest. Um, I think the I think you're I think you're right that the Bengals do win, but I will be hoping for the Chiefs to pull through because I think it will be the two week nostalgia fest, and I will be on the Andy Reid must be respected. I, yes. I am I am going to demand the respect from because Andy, to your point, uh, is doing or Doug Peterson now is doing in Jacksonville what Andy did for Philly, like it, that. People who are our age or a little older, a little younger, see the Philadelphia Eagles as a respectable franchise in the NFL landscape. Not just we really used to be like the Cowboys ankle biters, you know, and I know a lot of our (laughs) I know our our fan base isn't going to love to hear that, but we thrive. That was our Super Bowl is like screwing things up for the Cowboys. That's not who we are anymore. We're past them. Like, personally, I don't really remember the Buddy Ryan era. Like, I I remember, like, the mid-90s, late-90s, and the Eagles were kind of a middling team, you know. Yeah. They, they, they reached the playoffs some years. They'd maybe win a game, and then they'd get blown out by the Cowboys or the 49ers yeah. or just a better team. But then, you know, when Andy got here, they became a team that mattered. Like, the Eagles, before, like, I'll put it this way. The Eagles are only on national games if they were – playing the Cowboys, and that wasn't because the Eagles, that was because the Cowboys. The Eagles became, like, the main attraction in those early 2000s years, and, you know, Andy built them up. And, yeah, I understand he didn't win a Super Bowl, but, like, those weekends of watching Eagles football, you know, as, like, a teenager, it was more fun than it was, you know, not fun, if that makes any Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Like, I mean, I would, I, our, our downside was that we lost three straight NFC championships. I know that that's a little embarrassing and we're a little triggered even thinking about that, especially with tomorrow coming up. But like, think about that. That's t- like sports first world problems. Sorry. Right. Like, and it sucks that they didn't <laughs> end up winning the Super Bowl. But in the end, we had a lot of fun watching those teams. Those were, were great Eagles teams. And also, I think we can let it go a little bit. The fact that the Eagles did end up winning a Super Bowl, you know, the fact that they did end up getting it done in 2017, some of that bitterness should go away. And, you know, I think, I think people really need to appreciate what Andy did here, because I truly believe that if Andy Reid doesn't come here and he doesn't have the success that he had, like, I think that had an effect and it still has an effect through the Eagles organization now, because it taught Jeffrey Lurie how to win. It taught, even a guy like Howie, like Howie, you know, was with the organization those years. He was basically Joe Banner's understudy during those years. So Absolutely. it taught them what a real, you know, well-run organization looks like, what a real head coach um, looks like. And I think that's led to Jeffrey Lurie making a lot of really good choices, especially when hiring head coaches. Riding the wave of emotions, it sounded like we're getting we're, we're getting we're getting off. Uh, starting the week, the Chiefs Eagles Super Bowl two weeks off correctly. Mm-hmm. We're we're pre gaming it for people. The the tone of the conversation has to be respecting uh, respecting Andy Reid and all, and 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 understanding that yes, he didn't get the ultimate title, but we wouldn't be here without him. We would we wouldn't be this team. I'm not going to go for the disrespect to Andy Reid, period. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And people shouldn't. And, you know, uh, I'm just – if that does end up happening, it will be incredible. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that would be that would be an insane matchup. I don't even I, – I, it almost feels like it's too good to be true. That's why I think it won't happen because, you know, <laughs> when, when, when these kind of storylines seem set, so set up there, they never end up coming through. So um, Like Kobe yeah, I, LeBron. Yeah, kind. Yeah, exactly. Finals. Exactly. Yeah. Like oh, oh, 09 was probably the year they should have played. Uh, and the yep. Cavs lost that series to Orlando. But uh, yep. yeah, it's one. Yeah, that's a good comparison. Is it's one of those things, you know, where it, and Brady Rogers, I would say the same thing. Like, yep. how many years did it look like they were going to end up meeting the Super Bowl and it never happened? So I think this is probably, probably going to be one of those scenarios as well. Yeah, well. I'll, I'll be rooting for it. Uh, Tommy, where, where, where can we listen to you before, uh, before game time? 
Well, I will. Uh, I'm not back on before the game tomorrow, but uh, you know my shows are all podcasted on my uh, Trash Talk with TK uh, podcast feed. You can find uh, all my shows there. I did a whole breakdown of the game last night. Had Brandon Lee Gowton of Bleeding Green Nation on to help uh, break it all down. So if you want to check that out, you're welcome to. And I'll be back on the air um, a few times this week. I'll be tweeting out when I'm on, so uh, you can definitely catch me this week. Hopefully, uh, talking about the Eagles heading into the Super Bowl. You will. See you, Tommy. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, man.